Paramotor road trips are least demanding on skills from all other adventure types because Hi guys, welcome back to Paramotor Adventure Stories. My name is Miroslav and this is a complete guide to Paramotor Adventure of Flying. Let's start with Paramotor Road Trips. Paramotor Road Trips is a super simple concept. So basically, load your car, drive to a spot, fly on that spot, stay overnight, eventually fly the next morning on the same spot, just different direction, and move to another place during the day. Most suitable for paramotor flying, and you cover large distances and sea country. I want to do a little introduction to paramotor road trip with a few stories. So story number one, our paramotor road trips in the United States, that was probably four or five years ago with Shane, Ryan, Jeff, Byron, Javi Malagita, Zara, and my wife Zuzi, she's over there. Yeah, this was it. This is a photo taken by Ryan in the Monument Valley. So paramotor road trips are super easy to organize. So the way we did this trip is I just wanted to visit the States and I wanted to see it so badly and fly there. So I bought the tickets, rented the car, and basically told my friends from the States, hey, you wanna join me? And they all said yes. And this is how it is. So set the dates in advance and commit to it. So we had an amazing time flying over the Grand Canyon and the Monument Valley, the Great Salt Lake. Then we flew also over the Bonneville Salt Flat and we ended up flying the Burning Man Festival. That was a crazy place. Lesson learned from this is that Hammond road trips are so easy to organize, really, so easy. You just need to pick the dates, select some area and commit. It's really not much to discuss. Story number two, let's meet in the air. So when we organize trips, we have different skill level, all the pilots in the group. And the way I deal with it is that on takeoff, when we do the initial briefing, I say, okay, so everybody's ready, dressed up, pre-flight check, everything is fine, lighters laid down, ready for takeoff, we do the briefing. And the final thing I tell them that, okay, we will meet in 30 minutes over there. And that means, so we have a 30 minute takeoff window, uh, which allows the beginners to be free of stress. Because within those 30 minutes, they can do a takeoff attempt. And if they succeed, it's amazing. So they will wait over there uh, until the others take off. And if they don't, they still have plenty of time for the second or the third attempt without being too late, without being under the pressure that, oh, all the bodies are flying already and they're waiting for us, burning fuel and wasting time that I'm spoiling their adventure. So the lesson learned from this little story is that paramotor road trips are least demanding on skills from all other adventure types. Because if the weather is wrong, you can stay on the ground and you still have your car, so find some other activity. If you screw up, you can stay on the ground still safely and the least amount of uncertainty in this, so you always know where to come back. So truly, if I should summarize for someone how to start adventure flying, it should be paramotor road trips. Load your car, get out somewhere to some beautiful location, and just go flying. It's truly the easiest way how to start. How we failed to fly around Slovakia, that was about four years ago. So when I did my unsupported bivouac flight around Slovakia, 1,000 kilometers, six days, that was a long time ago. But I kind of inspired a lot of paramotor pilots, my friends here in Slovakia, and they wanted to do the same. So we decided, yes, we will do it, but this time with a support vehicle. Everything was planned, dates were set, and we had a place to start in the East Slovakia. We all gathered and it was raining. And the forecast wasn't really good and we canceled the whole adventure because we were stupid. Uh, there is no photo from this flight. There is no photo from the adventure, adventure because we gathered there, shaked hands, say goodbye, and everybody went home. 
the whole adventure was canceled. So the lesson learned from this little story is that this is not how it should be done. Commit to the adventure and just do it. Don't give up. So basically how I would do it now, or how we do it now, is we always plan a time period a little longer. So let's say we want to do a four day, a five day adventure. I would book a one week in my calendar. And this is how I would agree with all the others in the group. And if the weather is good on the first day, we start. If the weather is bad on the third day, we will make a little break and do some other stuff. It's always fun on the ground. So the way we do, how I learned from this, a failed adventure is that if we plan an adventure let's say four or five days long I would book a whole week in my calendar and if the weather is good on the first day we start and we commit but if it's not we will just slightly delay the start of the whole adventure because we still have the margin and the same things happen if in the middle of the adventure you have two rainy days and you can't fly then you just make a break and you continue uh, two days later so don't give up. That's the lesson learned from this story. Story number four, there is always good weather somewhere. This is basically our Iceland map. Iceland is a pretty large country and there are so many exciting spots that we can see that we can't even cover the whole thing in one week or nine days. But we have pre-selected several spots that we would love to fly, but actually the weather decides but having so many options. So we have probably 13 spots on all Iceland that we've already flown and know the places and are amazing to fly. And we know that we can cover maybe five or six of them, but we can adapt to weather. So this happened on the Iceland trip last year. So we've flown in the south for two days. Then the weather forecast turned to be pretty bad, heavy rain and very, very strong winds in the south. So we drove nine hours to the northwest here to the West Fjords an amazing spot with a huge cliff and there's a beautiful, beautiful waterfall. So we've been flying here in the West Fjords for two days and then we drove another eight hours back to the south because the weather got better now. And this is how you adapt to weather. Plan a lot larger area ahead that you can't cover and pick the spots based on the actual weather forecast and it's always gonna be good somehow. Maybe not perfect, but at least flyable. And it will be a very, very good adventure. Lesson learned, plan your adventure for a lot larger area that you can actually cover. Do your research in advance and then let the weather decide where you're gonna fly actually to maximize your paramotor experience. And even on those days when the weather totally doesn't cooperate and it's raining everywhere and you can't really escape it, you stay on the ground and go to Hot Springs or go to visit some places and you are with a group of friends so it's gonna be always really good fun and best time. So on the trips we have we did before, we had probably two or three where the flight or weather was truly pretty limited and we did only probably five or six flights but those flights were amazing and to remember for life. But then again, also the time in between was great fun. So guys, to summarize paramotor road trips, how to start? It's super simple. Get a group of three or five, select the dates in your calendar months ahead and commit to those days. Select the time frame a bit longer than what you actually need for the adventure to have some margin for bad weather, but stick to those days and go for it. Don't give up. In the end, you will see that it's a lot easier than it seems. And we can help you to do with that because in this series, we will cover all aspects of planning but also improvising on the trip. In the end, it's a lot easier than it seems at the beginning. And we'll try to make it easier for you. Subscribe to this YouTube channel so you don't miss any of the next chapters that we will discuss how to plan, what to prepare, what to take, how to improvise, how to stay safe, and how to share your adventure. The next chapter will be pretty interesting. We will do a brief introduction into the next level of adventure that is supported cross-country paramotor adventures. Supported means ground support is, is there to back you up with all what you need, but cross country means that you fly from A to B, that means you fly in very unknown terrain, you may be don't know perfectly where you land and you are exposed to the uncertainty even to a higher level. We will have amazing guests, Jean-Francois from United States, he's actually French but from States, and he's a true adventure pilot 
with lots of lots of experience, organized a few trips. So I'm really curious what he has to say and what stories he has to share with us so we can learn from it. Thank you very much for watching. Hit the subscribe button, share with your friends, hit the like button. I'm very grateful for that. This video and the whole series is brought to you by AdventureWingman.org. Adventure Wingman is a non-profit fund providing direct financial support to Paramotor Adventures. We directly try to promote Paramotor Adventures. So we cover up to 50% of the costs of the actual adventure. Anyone can apply, even you. So we very much hope that you will get some inspiration during watching our videos. We very much hope that with all the advice, we will encourage you to actually do it and then you will commit and please start at adventuringman.org website, read the terms and conditions, fill the sign up form, and maybe even your adventure will be selected for support. Thank you very much and see you with Gianfrancois in the next chapter.